This is Dr. Bossi with Inspired Spine, and I'm going to give you a brief natural history of the spine. Now, imagine when we are born, uh, our spine has very little function, and hopefully after we are 100 years old and we die at the old age, obviously our spine has no function either. When do you think that our spine achieves his, its 100% kind of performance and when I ask this question, most of people say 25. But the way you should think about it is, when do you see the Olympic gymnast being at their performance? And that age is actually between 12 and 16. So by the time they are 20, they are too old to perform all those tasks they do as Olympic gymnast. And obviously, most of us don't need really any help until old age, until our spine capacity falls below 25 or even 20%. Now, there are some childhood disease and genetic disease that they never get us, uh, led us to get to the maximum performance of our spine. And as well, the, some childhood habit can reduce um, our capacity. What we need to know is that once we reach our maximum at, uh, in our teenage uh, uh, age, after that our capacity is going to go down and it's important obviously to we achieve higher level because that enables us to become more uh, functional and achieve more uh, independency in older age for longer. Now, here, the childhood habit, sport, and just a healthy lifestyle can uh, contribute to our children's health. But as well, as an adult, you can have healthy spine habit or not healthy spine habit. Now, let me be very clear. Running professionally marathon is not a healthy adult spine habit. Or professional sport, as a matter of fact, put us on the lower curve, not healthy spine habit. With the spine habit uh, uh, being healthy, we mean a combination of activities that uh, enable us to have the best strength in the muscle, best posture, best uh, kind of exercise uh, regimen without overstressing our cartilage and joint and wearing them out too fast and anything in excess can actually be counterproductive in this sense. And this is by itself a huge uh, source of knowledge that we uh, convey to our patient and we push their unhealthy spine habit to healthy spine habit with a very comprehensive kind of protocol that has been put together in a multidisciplinary fashion. So. It is important to get involved sooner with us and even enroll in our programs and uh, sign up to get weekly uh, tips and uh, uh, connect a group of people that uh, they put you on a path to have a healthy spine habit because you want to stay independent for longer and further in your life, in your adult life. Now, the problem here is that uh, when we have a spine disease, like spondylolisthesis, stenosis, or break a bone, this activity drops like in a cliff, and practically we fall below 25% kind of performance, and all of a sudden we are unable to do basic tasks. Now, Let's imagine this is our healthy curve and now some spinal disease let you fall off the cliff. The problem here is that once you discover that the many spinal treatment, if it involves surgery, they are extremely excessive. So we, for a very good reason, because the risks are so high, we try not to give you any treatment uh, surgery at all. And then when you need the surgery and we know you need that, we tell you you're too young, too old, too big, and sort of try to delay the treatment. And by the time we do the surgery, the surgery itself so damaging that it never let you reach 
your maximum you know possible spine performance for your age group meanwhile you have lost valuable years in life experiences and that you couldn't do and because the risk of the surgery is so high the threshold for the surgery is so high meaning that even though we know it's not like uh, good for you we let you just uh, go through this process and in a way we contribute to uh, uh, narcotic epidemics we tell you live with the pain and safety first but many times what we don't tell you we mean safety first for my practice because we know if you don't uh, have healthy spine habit your cardiopulmonary capacity goes down your heart and lung practically the condition and we push you further along the path of having cardiac event have a heart attack and die but at least then your complication is not in our practice because surgery is risky and safety first now patients don't live with the pain they usually die with the pain and that is a circle vicious circle that we have to break in the spired spine we have our this intensive protocols we put you through a significant amount of conservative management but once we catch early on it's they are not working there is no reason to put you through years of lost life we not only perform the surgery and uh, with our multi-dimensional protocol once we confirm you need a surgery we put you through that surgery but we put you above the curve because we involve you now to, into protocols and uh, habits and uh, exercise training and so on that actually push your natural curve in the healthy zone and, um, and on top of that because we don't devascularize the bone we don't cut the muscle we don't render your spine uh, non-functional we can achieve or even surpass the natural curve of the spine now because our surgeries are so much less risky we have 20 cc of blood loss whereas 2000 cc of blood loss our surgeries are half an hour versus eight hours we can put you through that surgery sooner with our threshold is not uh, letting you first be years in pain let's now compare that olive or this family of surgery olive is just one example with uh, open surgery and when we do that you need to know again this threshold need help don't need help and this difference between these two is all the life experiences you are missing wedding birthday vacation golf games anything you care about by not being able to return to basic daily activities you are missing on life and it even worse many of those patients they go to other places they are told you cannot have a surgery you're too old you will die of the surgery and that's true they will be damaged or uh, the, the surgery is too risky for a surgery that's eight hours with thousand cc of blood loss or sometimes even more but now all of a sudden we make them candidates this patient decondition the heart and lung they practically give up as they say sharks must swim to live and human must walk to live if you're diagnosed with cancer you have a better life expectancy and prognosis than if you stop ambulating for whatever reason the average time to die is between six months and 12 months if you are bedridden and you stop uh, ambulating so especially in elderly this is a deadly situation you have to keep you on your feet and these are a group of patients that open surgery couldn't help and we can because all of a sudden our surgery is under an hour and our blood loss is 50 to 100 cc now let's look at the spine natural curve and i need to as well to educate we need to manage patient expectation and that is a big part of what we do when patients start at certain range, a certain age, with having a spine problem and they fall off the cliff, we are able to bring them back to their natural life. Now, and, and sometimes even above it. But now, let's say a few years later, 
patient come back and tell me, doctor, I, I'm good, but I still couldn't do things that I used to do when all of that started. And in a way, this is what they are expecting. They're expecting that the surgery or anything we do, put them on a path of becoming younger. That's called Benjamin Button eternal satisfaction curve, because if we don't manage patients' expectation, if they think they still need to be on jet skis and trampolines, to enjoy the life, and they will, they will be very unhappy as soon as uh, they hit 30, 40, and 50. In a way, what's one of the things we do, we, ex we manage patients' expectation. We try early on to give them meaning of life in with other activity that it doesn't include uh, jet skins, bungee jumping, skydiving, and things of that nature. And it, this is a cooperation with the patient that we achieve by uh, extended inspired spine protocols and a community. So we, we ask the people to sign up and be part of that. We give them logbooks and we connect them with uh, people in their uh, the community to be able to find better meaning of life without destroying their spine. I had many patients that in their, in their 40s and as soon as they know, maybe the times of super uh, extended marathons are over, they fall in depression. We need to manage their expectation early on. So again, early on, please register and get involved. Now, this is another curve that I uh, manage with uh, uh, my community, practically this data is from one of my hospitals that enable us uh, to really convey to you what it is what we are doing. This is a regular surgery for spine. Every time you hear somebody got a spine surgery, it's 80% likely that that person got this surgery. Here we correlate the body mass index or how big the patient is to how long the surgery took because we know every 30 minutes under the surgery at 70% to the combined risk of the surgery and longer surgeries are more risky and as a matter of fact all the other like uh, complication rate correlate with the time spent on the surgery now every time you hear minimal invasive spine surgery they are talking about minimal invasive transforaminal lumbar inter body fusion and that's the curve even in the best hand in many hands that MIS curve actually start above TLIF, but in, even in the best hands, once you hit BMI of 37, actually the surgery become longer and more dangerous. Look at our surgery. Not only we are at the fraction of the open surgery in time and complication, but we can keep that edge to the higher BMI. No other surgery in the spine has ever been able to achieve these results. This is the projections for both MIS and TLIF, and this is the projection for us, even in BMI of 52 and 59, look at that. We add very little to the time of the surgery. We still can do those surgeries under an hour, very safely. These are patients who have been told this surgery will kill you. You cannot have this surgery. Go lose 200 pounds and come back. They will not go and lose 200 pounds and come back. They will go and gain 200 pounds and die of cardiopulmonary event on their couch from heart attack because they cannot walk, they are in pain. Yet, their damage, their complication, their death doesn't happen in our practice, so we pat our back as spine surgeon that we are doing the safe things. This is a world-renowned hospital. If the surgery, one level, same surgery that we do in 35 minutes, if the BMI is below 35, they need three and a half hours. If the BMI is above 35, they need four hours and 20 minutes. And this is a major university hospital. And uh, we are going to uh, comparing the result with ours. And as you see, the results are really not comparable. Well, this is my presentation for a brief natural history of the spine. I hope you enjoyed that. Please get involved. Call us, connect to us in inspiredspine.org. Our goal is educate.